Hey, did you know that if you were to hold on to your Bitcoin and Ethereum or any other cryptocurrency for more than a year, you'll pay less in tax? Hey Money Tribe, it's Eric, your wealth building partner. I've been teaching about cryptocurrency taxation for the last four years and I've been in the crypto markets for the last four years as a day trader and as a miner. And there's a lot of misconceptions and there's a lot of things that a lot of accountants and tax professionals do not know about how cryptocurrency is taxed. So today I'm going to show you the basics of how your cryptocurrency is taxed so that way you can understand how to save money on your taxes. All right, Money Tribe, so let's first talk about the basics of how cryptocurrency is taxed because there's a lot of folks out there that really don't understand this, including tax professionals. So let's clear the air first. Okay, first of all, cryptocurrency to the IRS is treated as property, meaning it's gonna be treated just like as if you were trading a stock or a bond or a collectible. What does that really mean for you and I? Basically, you're gonna only pay tax on the profit. The profit is basically you have a basis, whatever you paid for the coin, and then whatever you sold it as, if it increased in value, that is your profit. So let's say, for example, you bought Bitcoin at $10,000. It's now worth $30,000 and you sold it. When you sold it, you have a $20,000 gain or $20,000 profit. You're paying tax on a 20 grand, not the entire 30. Now, when it comes to taxation, you pay tax on the profit. However, if you have losses, you can deduct the losses against your gains. So let's say you had a $20,000 in gain from Bitcoin, but you had a $5,000 loss on Ethereum that you traded before. The $5,000 loss is subtracted from your $20,000 gain. You're paying tax on $15,000. Okay, hopefully that's clear for all of you. Now the tax is going to be treated either as a long-term or short-term capital gains. So next, I'm going to show you a little trick on why you might want to be a hodler like myself or hold on for dear life because it's going to help you minimize how much you're paying in tax. Okay, so now that we understand the basics of taxation, let's explain the difference between long-term and short-term and why it might make sense for you to hodl your coin. So let's look at it, long-term versus short-term. Long-term basically means you're holding onto the coin for more than a year, a year and a day. So if you're an OG Bitcoiner from back in like 2008, you're definitely a hodler. Now the benefit of that is you're taxed at a zero, 15 or 20% rate depending on where you sit with your income tax bracket. Now if you're a short term position type of person, that means you've held onto the coin for less than a year. So any of you out there who are actively trading or swapping or transferring coins and you're taking advantage of the swings in the market, chances are the majority of your coin is in short term gains. Now, keep in mind that you're going to pay tax at your ordinary income tax bracket, which is up to 39.7%. So imagine if you're making $100,000 in gains on crypto, you're like, man, I made a ton of money. Keep in mind that Uncle Sam wants his piece of the action. And if you're in a high income tax bracket, that could cost you up to 39.7% plus whatever your state charges for cryptocurrency gains or capital gains, which could be another five to 10%. You might be making only 50% of the money you think that you're making because the government takes half of that. Let's keep that in mind. So you're probably sitting here thinking, Eric, what does this have to do with me? How does this relate to me? Either long-term or short-term, and why should I determine what type of holding period I have for my cryptocurrency? So let's go into that one in the detail. So let's say you have $100,000 in profit. 100 grand, sounds amazing. You did wealth Ethereum or Bitcoin, sushi swap. Maybe Dogecoin and Dogecoin went to the moon, right? And you got $100,000 in profit. Let's assume that you have an AGI of $75,000. Yo, Eric, what is AGI? Oh yeah, good question. So AGI stands for adjusted gross income. A lot of folks do ask, what is AGI? That's adjusted gross income. What that means is when you file your tax return, you're gonna report all of your income from your W-2s, from working at your job, from running your business, for your day trading, all that stuff. And then after certain adjustments, like contributions to your IRA, for moving expense, educator expense, that reduction would give you your adjusted gross income. And that's what a lot of tax brackets are based upon, right? So it's not necessarily how much you earn from work that dictates your tax bracket. It's your AGI or adjusted gross income. Great question. So if you're long-term and you've held on to this cryptocurrency for more than a year, 
you're going to be taxed in this income at 15%. So $10,000 profit means that you have a $1,500 tax on the federal side. Now, if you're a short-term trader, like a lot of folks are, because you're playing with the velocity and the fluctuations in the market, nothing wrong with it, but do know that you are paying a larger tax. If you're a short-term person, you're gonna be paying, at this adjusted gross income, 22%. Now, as you make more income, your tax brackets are also gonna increase. So. Just on a side note, if any of you have any questions on how tax brackets work or how taxes work in general, put a comment or a question down in the comments and I would love to, you know, if there's enough demand to make a video on how tax brackets work. Okay, so that said, $75,000 adjusted gross income, you're in a 22% short-term income tax bracket, you're paying 2,200 bucks in tax. So the difference between the two is 700 bucks just by holding on to your position for a little bit longer. So here it might be a situation where, let's say for example, you bought the coin in January 15th, and now you're in December deciding if you should sell or not. You have a, a, an interesting position to be in because number one, do you sell and take profit, but take a short-term capital gain and pay more in tax? Or do you hold on to it for a little bit longer, also knowing that you're gonna be paying, in this particular situation, 7% less in tax? So there's a lot of more nuance to trading than really just determining if you made a profit. Also understand that because the federal government and most of the times your state as well is a partner in your trading activity, you're gonna wanna consider them as an expense of your trading and take it off the table before you put that money in your pocket, right? So again, long-term, short-term on a $10,000 profit is a difference of 700 bucks. So keep that in mind. A lot of folks don't realize that. Okay, so now we understand the difference between long-term and short-term capital gains, and we want to realize that hodling a coin might save you tax. But now you might be asking me, Eric, what actually constitutes a taxable event when I'm working with my cryptocurrency? So let's clear that one up because that's a really common question. So what is taxable? Anytime you sell crypto to cash, utilizing a fiat on-ramp like Coinbase, meaning let's say you have $30,000 in Bitcoin and you decide to cash it in. You cash it in, you sell the coin, and now Coinbase has this cash waiting for you. And then if you were to transfer that cash to you or even not transfer it to you, the moment that sale occurs, it triggers a taxable implication and you're gonna to wanna to report your basis, which you paid for it, and your profit from the sale. Also, what a lot of folks don't realize is exchanges or transformations or shape shifts between coins is also a taxable implication. Let's say, for example, you use a hot wallet. Hot wallet meaning something like Exodus or a brokerage account like Kraken or any of the other BitMEX or these other exchanges out there. And let's say you transfer Ethereum into these exchanges and then now this is the only way you're going to be able to buy dogecoin right because everybody loves those memes when that happens when you transfer the funds into this exchange and then basically transfer or transform your ethereum into dogecoin that also triggers a taxable implication because effectively even though you didn't get cash that original ethereum was sold at a certain price and in lieu of cash you got dogecoin instead so you're gonna to wanna to keep track of that. So those are two of the most common taxable transaction in cryptocurrency. Now, a lot of folks don't really always realize what is not taxable, because this is just as important as knowing what is taxable. So what's not taxable is number one, holding on the coin. If you purchased a Bitcoin and you didn't sell it or have not sold it, have not exchanged it, not have not transformed it, it doesn't trigger a tax implication. You're just holding on to it just like a stock and you're eventually getting appreciation. But in the interim, there's no tax that's being levied on your assets. And also what a lot of folks don't realize is transferring your coin into a cold wallet, whether it's a ledger or a nano or a trezor, those transactions do not trigger or constitute a taxable implication because the coin that you have on Coinbase or on Kraken or on these other exchanges, that's your coin and the moment you transfer it into your wallet, it's still the same coin. Now the challenge with that is when you get your tax form at the end of the year from Coinbase, they don't know where that coin went, so they trigger it as if it's taxable. So you're gonna want to make sure that you're looking over your spreadsheet of expenses and all of your transactions and make sure that if you did move it to cold wallet, 
to define and state that is a non-taxable transaction. All right, if you stayed this long in the video, by now you have a lot of information when it comes to cryptocurrency taxes. But I'm also sure that you might have a lot of questions that have came up as well. If you have any questions, make sure to put them in the comment section below. I personally respond to each and every one, and if there's enough interest, I'll make a video on whatever question that you have. So make sure you put it down there. Also, don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe if you want to learn more about how to build your wealth. Again, I'm your partner in helping you build wealth, and that's my overall mission for this channel. With that said, I put up videos every single week, not just on cryptocurrency, not just on taxes, but on wealth building, entrepreneurship, and just headspace and your mental development as well. So I look forward to seeing you again next time. Have a great day.